What the hell is intermittent fasting and is it all it's made out to be? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name's Richie Kerwin and today we're going to talk about something that has been one of the most popular diet trends for the last 10 years or so. Intermittent fasting. What is it? How do you do it? And is it better than plain old dieting? Before I go any further, I want to point out that I'm only going to be talking about intermittent fasting in the context of fat loss or muscle gain, because those are by far the most popular reasons people look into it. I will talk about some of the potential health benefits of IF, but they won't be my focus. So first off, what even is intermittent fasting? Well, there are a few different types, but at its heart, IF is an eating pattern where you combine periods of eating with periods of extended fasting. To put things in context, the longest period of fasting that most people experience is the overnight fast between the last meal and breakfast. Yes, the first meal of the day is literally the meal where you break your fast, in the English language at least. Now, there are a lot of different types of intermittent fasting that mostly vary by the amount of time spent fasting and the amount of time eating. So here are a few examples. Probably the simplest form of fasting is known as alternate day fasting. And this is where people eat one day and fast the next. Pretty simple, right? Another very popular type of fasting is 5-2 fasting. This is where someone eats normally for five days a week and they fast for two days a week. There are also versions of this where people don't completely fast on the fast days, but have a very small amount of calories, maybe four or 500 to help with hunger. So yeah, it's not really fasting, but they call it modified fasting. One type of fasting that has become incredibly popular in the last few years is 16-8 fasting, which was made really popular by Martin Birkin and his Lean Gains Method. In 16-8 fasting, you fast for 16 hours a day and you have an eight hour feeding window. In practice, for some people, this can be as easy as skipping breakfast and waiting until lunchtime to have your first meal of the day. To be more exact, this type of fasting is actually called Time Restricted Feeding or TRF because you limit the feeding window to specific times of the day. There's also a type of time restricted feeding called OMAD or one meal a day. And you guessed it, you only eat once a day and spend the rest of the time fasting. And just as an interesting side note, some people like to claim that while they're fasting, they take some branched chain amino acids or medium chain triglycerides to help fuel workouts. I hate to break it to you though, if you're eating any type of macronutrient, protein, like BCAs, fat, like MCT oil, or carbs, you're breaking your fast. Does it matter practically? Not really. But it's worth clarifying because people really get hung up on when a fast is actually broken. So why has intermittent fasting become so popular? Well, if you've ever watched any of my previous videos on weight loss, and if you haven't, you really should check them out now, you'll know that for weight loss to happen, you need a calorie deficit, meaning you need to be eating fewer calories than you burn. Intermittent fasting is a form of automatic calorie restriction. That's something that can help you reduce your calories without actually having to count calories, like cutting out carbs or avoiding processed foods. You see, if you limit the time you can eat, you limit the amount of calories you eat, which can lead to weight loss. And this is the point where I crush a lot of your dreams by telling you what you don't want to hear. When it comes to weight loss, there is no magic to intermittent fasting. You see, a lot of people have got it into their head that intermittent fasting allows you to eat as much as you want during your feeding window, as long as you fast when you're supposed to. Nothing could be further from the truth. Intermittent fasting works the exact same way as every other diet works, by reducing the calories that someone eats. How do we know that? Well, luckily there have been a number of trials that have compared intermittent fasting with standard daily calorie deficits, otherwise known as continuous energy restriction. So what does the science say exactly? Intermittent fasting works, but its effects aren't any better than regular dieting when calories are controlled. Now, before I get assaulted in the comments section for saying intermittent fasting doesn't work, that's not what I'm saying at all. They absolutely do work, but there's no magic to intermittent fasting diets, and they just work just like every other diet in existence by creating a calorie deficit. On top of having similar weight loss results, intermittent fasting also seems to result in similar improvements in different markers of cardiometabolic health compared with continuous calorie restriction, like cholesterol, triglycerides, and markers of inflammation. In fact, a recent trial with 139 participants using early TRF, where people only ate between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., found that both the TRF and the normal calorie restriction groups lost the same amount of weight and got the same improvements in blood lipids and other metabolic markers. There were no significant differences between the groups. Now, while that sounds negative, it's actually really good and shows that intermittent fasting 
is a viable option for people who want to improve their health and lose some weight. That said, there have been some studies that have shown differences between intermittent fasting and continuous calorie restriction and have shown slightly different effects on some metabolic markers, but we need a lot more research before we can say anything about them for sure. So that might make you ask, why has intermittent fasting become so effective and so popular? Well, there are a few practical reasons that make it a really easy diet to follow for some people. First off, it's very easy to implement. There doesn't have to be any calorie counting if you don't want to. You don't have to change the foods that you eat. You just eat the same food you normally eat, but you just have less time to do it. For example, one pilot study just told the participants to eat breakfast an hour and a half later and dinner an hour and a half earlier for 10 weeks. They gave them no other instructions. That was the only diet advice they received. And over the course of 10 weeks, they automatically ate fewer calories and lost weight. The easier you make a diet, the more likely people are going to be able to stick to it and have success. Another thing that makes intermittent fasting easy and convenient is that you have fewer meals to worry about and to cook for. If you're doing time-restricted feeding, you don't need to worry about eating and cleaning up breakfast in the morning. You just wake up and go. Another possible benefit of intermittent fasting, especially the alternate day or extended fasting, is that when you haven't eaten for a while, your body produces ketones, which it uses as a fuel source, which may actually help to reduce appetite. If people are less hungry, they're also less likely to overeat. And something that people love about intermittent fasting, or specifically time-restricted feeding, is that it can allow you to have fewer but larger, more satisfying meals instead of more small meals. This alone can be enough for some people who are sick of the little and often meal mentality. That said, intermittent fasting comes with its fair share of problems too. First off, it can be very difficult to fit around a social life. Skipping breakfast is usually fine, but if you don't eat after 7 p.m. in the evening and your friends want to go out for dinner at 8, it's going to suck while you sip your sparkling water, while you longingly watch them chow down on some juicy burgers, some delicious onion rings, and a nice big slice of cheesecake for dessert. Who needs friends, right? Another issue with intermittent fasting is something I mentioned earlier. It's still possible to overeat during your eating window, and that can completely wipe out the calorie deficit you created while fasting. Like I said, some people have got it into their heads that it doesn't matter how much you eat during your feeding window, but the truth is calories still matter. There is some research that some people may actually eat more and even move less when they know that they have a day of dieting coming up. Again, this can potentially defeat the whole purpose of the fast. That said, this brings me to another issue with intermittent fasting as it relates to the second most common use for it, muscle gain. You see, a common question is whether intermittent fasting can be used for bulking or lean gaining, and my answer is yes, but it's probably not ideal. You see, if you watched any of my videos on bulking or protein timing and distribution, and if you haven't, remember to check them out after this one, you'll know that two of the most important factors for muscle gain are getting enough calories and getting getting regular protein feedings. As I've already mentioned, fasting, no matter what type you do, makes it harder to get enough calories. And if you're a hard gainer, it's likely that you don't eat enough calories as it is. So intermittent fasting isn't going to help you with that. But on top of that, I've also spoken about how important it is to get regular doses of enough high quality protein to stimulate muscle protein synthesis after training. Muscle protein synthesis is the process that your body uses to build more muscle and you can stimulate it after resistance exercise for up to 24 or maybe even 48 hours. The more you can stimulate MPS, in theory, the more muscle you can potentially build. If you go for long periods without eating, you're losing out on opportunities to stimulate muscle growth. That's not to say you can't build muscle while fasting. You absolutely can. And we have evidence from a few studies to show just that. And it seems just as effective as regular dieting for muscle retention. The thing is, when it comes to absolutely maximizing your muscle gains, more frequent protein feedings are potentially a better option. Again, I'm not saying you can't build muscle while intermittent fasting. I'm just saying it may not be the most efficient way of doing it. And one more thing worth mentioning. A lot of people like to mention that when you fast, your body starts producing more growth hormone, and this actually helps with building muscle. So it is true that your body produces more growth hormone while fasting, but, and it's a really big but, the levels of growth hormone released by your body during a fast aren't actually high enough to have any benefit on long-term muscle growth. On top of that, growth hormone is actually more important for long bone growth when you're young than it is for muscle size. So now that we've cleared up the confusion around some of the aspects of intermittent fasting, 
fasting, who should actually try it? So here's the thing, it really depends on the preference of the individual. Some people absolutely love intermittent fasting because it's really easy for them to fit into their lifestyles. Often, these are people that don't get hungry in the morning and don't mind skipping breakfast. Or people who have really busy lifestyles that make skipping meals easy. Or, you know, people without social lives. While preferring one way of eating over another doesn't sound particularly important, it absolutely is. You see, at the end of the day, the specific diet you follow only matters if you can actually stick to it. And this is called dietary adherence. If intermittent fasting helps someone to stick to their diet better than other ways, then that's reason enough to do it. Never forget the importance of adherence for anything, for your diet, or your exercise. On the other hand, some people just can't do intermittent fasting at all. If you're the kind of person that skips breakfast only to get ravenously hungry at 10 a.m. and ends up eating 10 slices of toast and half a box of cereal to make up for it, fasting probably isn't for you. On top of that, there are also people suffering from disordered eating, like people who regularly binge and restrict, or people with really poor relationships with food. For people like that, intermittent fasting is probably not a good idea, and an eating pattern that helps you to develop a healthier, more consistent relationship with food is probably much better. The easiest way to find out if it works for you is to try it for a week or two. If it works, great. If it doesn't, at least you try it. So I hope that cleared everything up for you about intermittent fasting. As always, if you have any more questions, let me know in the comments below and let us know about your own experiences with intermittent fasting. Remember to hit the like button and to subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.